So again, we can compute the covariance of our vectors, each vector representing an image, um, using this equation. Since we've subtracted off the mean from the input vectors, the mean is equal to zero. So this drops out. We just get the covariance of x is equal to um, the sum of x, x transpose, which is just our, um, our matrix B times B transpose divided by the total number K. So as before, we'll let A be the matrix whose rows are the eigenvectors of our covariance matrix. And in this case, the eigenvectors represent basis images, and we'll call them eigen images. Here's an example of using that on a collection of face images. Um, so each image in this set we have transformed to a vector. Um, and we, as you can see, there's a number of uh, people here, um, different views of the same person, but a number of different people as well. So we perform the PCA on those um, those eigen, or, I'm sorry, those collection of face images, and we produce eigen images, or in this case, we call them eigen faces. So here are the first set of the most um, important or um, largest variation uh, eigen images. So. Um, Basically, we would represent any face now as the mean plus some linear combination of these eigenfaces. And as you can see, with only 25 principal components, the ones we've shown here, we capture 56% of the variance in our data set. This shows um, reconstruction with a small number of principal components. So. This figure here is the mean face, or the average face. And this shows um, reconstructing one of the faces with one additional principal component at each step. So this is mean plus one principal component, mean plus two principal components, plus three, and so forth. So as the number of principal components increases, the um, definition or accuracy of the reconstructed face gets better and better. Here they're adding eight principal components at every step. So when you get down to this stage here, which is probably something like 80, 80 principal components, it's a very good um, representation of that original face. Okay, quick note on computational expense. Um, this has to do with the size of that B matrix. So remember B was um, the matrix formed by all our images in our set. So the number of rows was the number of pixels in each image. The number of columns is the number of images. So typically the number of rows is much greater than the number of columns. So that means that B, B transpose is a large matrix. So if this kind of schematically shows the size of B and the size of B transpose, that matrix product gives us um, a square matrix of this size. So what we want to do is compute the uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix, which corresponds to the covariance matrix. But this is expensive for a large matrix. So instead, we'll look at um, this multiplication of B transpose B. So this is a much smaller matrix, as you can see. Um, it's basically a square matrix where the dimensions are the number of images that we have. So we can compute the eigenvectors of this smaller matrix. Let's say we do that. So we find eigenvectors V and eigenvalues lambda. But if we were to multiply each side of this by b um, and group the matrices, you can see that we have this vector b, v on each side. So I have a matrix times a vector is equal to a scalar times that same vector. So that's exactly an eigenvector. So what we're saying then is that the 
um, eigenvectors of B, B transpose are just these guys here, this B times V. Of course, we still need to scale them so that they're unit vectors. So this is a cheaper way to get the eigenvalues of this big matrix is we get the eigenvalues of this much smaller matrix. Um, we can only get the first k eigenvectors because, of course, um, this matrix is much smaller than that other matrix that we had. All right, so let's look at how to do how to use this PCA for um, finding matches or searching matches uh, for images. So let's say we want to find a match for an image. Let's say a face. We call it I1. So we search through our database of images looking for an image I2 such that the, um, the sum of squared differences pixel by pixel is small. So since, since we can put these images into vector form that would be the same as taking the uh, squared error or difference between x1 and x2. But if x1 and x2 represent large images, they're, this is expensive because these are large vectors. So instead, we want to do this computation in uh, using these uh, principal component coefficients. So in other words, we transform our images um, to uh, another set of vectors called y, and these vectors are very small. So to see how that works, um, x1 is just a sum of um, eigen images. So it is um, a linear combination of eigen images from 1 to n. And I have coefficients uh, y1, uh, similarly for x2. And of course, I um, keep only the top k um, principal components. So this is an approximation to this uh, difference here. Then I'll group um, the eigenvectors E. And so I just have a sum of uh, y1 minus y2 times the corresponding eigenvector. Sum all that up and, and take the square. So this is essentially the squared length of a vector represented by a set of unit vectors E. So that is just the squared um, of all the components like this or it's the difference um, between y1 and y2 and that length squared. So basically, we can compute this difference between two images uh, much, cheap, much more cheaply in eigenspace. So our approach then is then we read in a set of training images, a database, put them into vector form, compute the mean and subtract off that mean, put the vectors into the columns of a matrix B, compute the eigenvectors of B transpose B, compute the principal components of what we really want by multiplying B times V. So V, v is the uh, matrix composed of all the eigenvectors of V. So those are our principal components. And then for a testing phase, we read in a new image x, we subtract off the mean that we computed up here. We project um, that new image onto the space of principal components by multiplying um, by the principal components here. We take that um, set of coefficients, y, that vector, and find its closest match to the y's that we got from the training set here.